eighth grade, I'm going to be continuing on with this set of eyes that you probably remember from the previous video. Um, I'm going to start adding in some shadow to help our eyes begin to look more 3D. So you'll hear me use the word shadow or value. They mean the exact same thing. Um, both of them are necessary to turn these two-dimensional eyes into something that appear to be 3D. So my favorite way to start shading is to start with the very darkest parts of the eye. It is my preference. I have always enjoyed starting dark and working light. Um, I find a lot of people are really timid with their shadows and their artwork doesn't suffer for it, but it doesn't thrive the way it can if you know how to add in really deep dark shadows. So I'm starting with my pupil here. I went out of the lines there. Not a big deal. I'm going to be blending it anyway. Um, another dark part of the eye is going to be on the iris here, right underneath the eyelid. The eyelid comes off from the surface of the eye a little bit and it creates a little bit of shadow on the top part of the eye. Now if you're somebody who has really dark brown eyes, you might not um, have such a value difference between the pupil and the rest of the eye. You might have an eye that almost appears perfectly black. If that is you, just draw what you see. You'll have a little bit easier of a time. I have lighter eyes. My eyes are blue, but I have kind of a yellow ring around the inside. Um, and then a darker blue ring on the outside. So that's what I'm trying to show here. Most people with lighter eyes have a little bit of a darker ring right around the outside. Now I know this looks a little bit crazy, but what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm just ever so lightly with my pencil going to create these lines that radi radiate out from the center of the eye. If you've ever looked at your eye up close, you've probably seen that there are little lines coming out from the center. Um, this circle here, I'm gonna leave alone. That's gonna become the light reflection on the eye. So I wanna leave it perfectly pure white. And once I'm feeling really good about where I've placed down uh, my graphite, I'm gonna come back with my blending stump. I like a number four. You can use whichever size appeals to you the most. And this is where the magic really comes in. The blending stump is going to help the eye begin to look like a smooth, glossy surface. And I want it really nice and dark right underneath the eyelid, leaving that light reflection alone. And then I'm gonna smooth it around the outside, and just very lightly come up along the surface of the pupil. And you can start to see that it's starting to look like a round reflective surface just like the surface of the eye. I don't want my light reflection to be a perfect circle so I'm gonna whittle it down to be more of a square. I think I'm gonna stick with a square today. I feel pretty good about that. If you put down too much value, you can always come back just tapping it with your eraser to show that lower highlight. Ooh, I like the look of that. I'm gonna keep that. I like that a lot. Maybe I'll come around one more time. Now, if I were going to do both eyes, I would move directly to the other eye now and do the same thing on the other eye, but I'm not going to make you watch me do two versions. So I will probably do this eye in full. Just remember when you're working in your sketchbook, if you finish your iris, you should immediately move over to the other eye and do the iris there. When you switch back and forth, it's going to make your drawing look more consistent and it's going to help those two eyes look um, symmetrical. This is going to bother me though, so I'm just going to finish that pupil just for my own sanity. We all have our things, this is my thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue forward with this eye. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna establish the tear duct, and the tear duct is that little pink corner on the part of the eye that points towards your nose. So this would of course be the bridge of my nose. The tear duct is gonna fall right along those lines. And I don't like to overemphasize the bottom eyelid. Sometimes I lighten it up so light because I don't want it to look like I'm wearing um, eyeliner. If you're wearing eyeliner, go right ahead. I don't like eyeliner very much. So I'm going to lighten that up. I'm going to get a little bit of shadow on the outer corners. 
If I want to, I could come in with my blending stump and very, very carefully, very lightly, just add a little bit of shadow right around the inside corner and a little bit along the outside corner. And you can see what that's doing is it's giving a shadow in the areas that are going back and it's leaving a white reflective part as it comes towards the front of the face. Drawing is all about learning tricks. There is, of course, an element of talent, but learning tricks like this are can take your artwork from something that looks like elementary school into something that looks like high school or college level. And I've seen some kids practice eyes so much they get better at me, better at it than I am. Um, right now, I'm going to come in with my blending stump, and my blending stump already has a little bit of graphite on it. You can see um, the other end hasn't been used, so this one won't be very helpful to me. I'm going to come in with my blending stump, and I'm just going to start giving myself some shadow right over the crease of the eye. I'm going to have a little bit of shadow. Underneath the eye, I don't want to give too much. It might make my eye look like I have bags under my eyes. And all of you beautiful eighth graders have gorgeous skin and you do not have bags under your, under your eyes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this is my sketchbook. I'm going to give myself some graphite so that I can put my blending stump down and pick up some of that graphite. So I have something to blend. Keep that in your sketchbook. You don't want to do that on your actual drawing, of course. And I'm just very, very carefully going to use my blending stump to create a shadow. And you'll notice I'm making it darker on the outside, lighter, or darker on the inside, and then light on that part of the eyelid that comes forward. I might have a little bit on the eyelid itself. And then maybe I'll get a little shadow right here. I'm going to save the eyebrow for later. I could come in with my finger and blend if I needed to as well. So I really want to make sure I can see the crease. So I'm going to come back and add a nice definitive line. And now I'm going to come back and redefine You can see this is starting to get tedious. I will try to go as quickly as I can. And of course, you'll be going back and forth between two eyes. I'm doing very little to emphasize the lower eyelid. And now I think I'm ready for eyelashes. I saved my eyelashes for the end just because they're easy to accidentally smudge up. <laughs> So eyelashes, a lot of times kids will draw eyelashes that look like this. They'll have their eye, pardon the quick sketch, and they'll just kind of start coming out every which way with their eyelashes. And that's not really the way it works. Your eyelashes kind of curve down and back up again, and they don't all go the same direction. They might crisscross. You might have some long ones. You might have some short ones. They're usually a little more dense towards the eye, and then they get lighter as they come away from the face. You might have some that are a lot more visible. Some might be really pale. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for that. I don't wanna overemphasize them. The ones on the bottom, there's always a little gap between the eyeball and where those bottom lashes start. So I'm just gonna do ever so lightly. And they're usually shorter. These ones curve up and down. I don't wanna do too much with those. Not my personal best, but it'll do for now. And I like to even sometimes use my blending stump to even blend them out a little more. 
And I don't even go all the way to the inside there. All right, I feel pretty good about that. Now, if I wanted to, I could come in with my eyebrow. The eyebrow is pretty easy. It's just little lines that would look like hairs moving in the direction that the eyebrow grows. So as it goes outward, you're gonna lay down those little I'm not as worried about your eyebrows, and you can tell I'm kind of slapping this one together last second. And I'll use my blending stump. If you're good at makeup, you'll probably be good at this too. All right, and that's a pretty basic eye. This doesn't look like a photograph. You can tell it's a drawing. Um, as you get uh, more familiar with the parts of the eye, this will become a whole lot easier for you to do. Um, don't forget, you always want to be going back and forth between those two eyes, but hopefully you can see a tremendous difference between just a regular outline and an eye that has been given a fair amount of shadow. I'm not done with this. This is not nearly where I want it to be, but I can do that on my own time. I think you've got enough to get started on your own. Good luck, guys. Have fun.